Okay, in the last video, we created a test bench just using this and just sort of copying and pasting the same thing over and over again. For a small finite state machine, this is a fine solution, but for anything of scale, what you're going to want is to create a test vector file, which is just all your inputs and the expected outputs on rows. And then you can just feed in lots of values and it'll throw errors when the expected output doesn't match the inputs. So let's go add to project a new file. And this is going to be test bench vector. And it is going to be a text file. What this is going to look like is it's going to be our inputs. So it's going to be reset is one. So we're going to have a one there. And then I haven't given it out, but let's, let's assume here we said in was zero. It's going to be one and then zero for the input to X. And then the expected output is zero. So I'm going to put an underscore just to separate them out. And that's a row. That's, that's going to be a test. And then another one, it's going to be zero, zero, zero. Zero, zero, zero. So, so from now on, reset's going to stay low. So, but we're going to mod modify in. So it's going to be zero, one, zero. Zero, one, zero. And this can continue. And this is going to be our series of tests, OK? And I'm, I'm pretty sure these are all going to be right, but let's throw, let's make one wrong, right? So I'm going to say that's the output there, and that, that should be wrong, line seven. Now, instead of doing all this, we're just going to axe that. And now in initial, we're going to say, okay, read mem, and then we're going to say test bench vector. And we're going to give that to a file. So right here, I'm just going to create a logic file from two to zero. Uh, so you know, those, those three bits. And I'm going to call this test vector. And let's just say there's 1000 and one of them. So we're going to load this into that file. So this, this is going to be called, called text vector here. So load that file into that variable. And then we're going to go always at the pause edge of the clock. We're going to set our reset input, our in input and we're going to create another variable called expected out expected out and those are going to be loaded from our test vector and I'm going to index that with a variable i so here we're going to say you know some 32 bit integer in the initialize stage, I'm going to set i to be 0. And I'm just going to set reset equal to 1 and n equal to 0, just so there's some initial values. On the positive edge of every clock cycle, we're going to get our expected output and our two inputs. And then at the negative edge of the clock, we're going to go, if the expected out doesn't equal the value we for out that we got, then I'm just going to say wrong output for inputs percent %b. And then I'm just going to pass these, reset, and then in. And then we're also just going to say percent %b doesn't equal percent %b. And we're just going to say expected out and out. And then increase the i, so i equals i plus 1. Okay, so what's happening here? We're reading in our test bench vector. And then on the positive edge, we're getting our expected output and our two inputs. On the negative edge, we're comparing our expected output to the new output, and we're outputting it if it's wrong. And then we're incrementing our i, getting the next row. This continues. So let's go, let's first build. So compile everything. And then let's go to library, right click, simulate our test bench without optimization. Let's add these to a wave, signals in region, and then let's go simulate, run, run 100. And boom, look at that. It's doing a thing. And look, it's output our values, and then it's gone, oh, wrong outputs for 0, 1. And so we go, okay, what's going on there or whatever? And I know it's just that we changed this. And so now we go simulate, restart. Run it again, and look at that, it works. So that's how you do that.